Love them or hate them, adore them or fear them. With over 7,000 species, the one thing you have to do is accept them, and the best way to do this is to understand them. This is all about assassin books. <laughs> Let's begin at the beginning, where it began, with the oldest assassin book fossil discovered in Green River, Colorado, USA, which dates back 50 million years when Keith Richards was still in school. The fossil itself is so well preserved that you are able to make out the markings on the legs and internal features of its genitalia. Sam Heads of the Illinois Natural History Survey said that checking out insect genitalia is one of the best ways to determine where it belongs in its family tree, as species are often defined as a new species by their genitalia alone. Assassin books go by many names in many countries, so to ease confusion let's explore the book's taxonomy. Assassins are true bugs belonging to the order Omictra, and are generally known for their freaky mouth parts that are often called beaks. The beak or proboscis is designed for stabbing and sucking, much like one of my old ex-girlfriends, and is also referred to as a rostrum in some publications. To go back to the many names of the assassin bug, here are a few that you almost definitely will know. Kissing bugs, ambush bugs, thread leaded bugs, and wheel bugs. If you know any more names for this wonderful bug, then please let me know in the comments below. Whilst you're down there, you may as well press that like and subscribe button. Now where were we? Common genera you may have heard of are Platymeris, Cytala and Etricodia, which are often kept as pets here in Europe and possibly elsewhere. For this I'm going to be looking at the ones we keep as pets, or this video would be 9 hours long if I went through the average life cycle of each species, but much of the information will be common to most if not all. Assessing books go through three distinct life stages, often written as L, Egg, Nymph and Adult. During the nymph stage, the insect will molt around five times depending on species during a process known as ecdysis, and each nymph stage is called an insar, often written as I. I1 should be used to identify an insect after it has hatched from an egg, and each molt after the instar increases until it is an adult. One of my favourite species that sounds like it is named after a Roman general, Platymeris picatatus, or two spot assassin bug can live up to two years, giving it quite a long lifespan as far as most arthropods are concerned. Over that period, the female will lay quite a lot of eggs, even if she's not been mated, although these will not be fertile and not result in nymphs. Mated females will lay eggs in damp substrate that look very similar to the eggs of phasmids, almost seed-like in appearance, right down to the hilum. These eggs take several weeks to hatch depending on temperature and a further 6-8 to eight weeks to achieve adult status. When assessing bugs were first introduced to the hobby, they was, of course, collected from the wild and sold into the pet trade. These days all assassin bugs in the pet trade are captive bred and due to their prolific reproduction rates they are relatively cheap. A diet is something that assassin bugs are most certainly not on. They will eat anything that moves if they can grab it. Crickets, mealworms, locusts, waxworms, caterpillars and many other arthropods go towards the assassin bug's diet. The bugs will often jump at their prey and grip them tightly with their front legs, then stab them with their proboscis and inject a paralyzing venom that turns the prey's internal organs to liquid, which they suck out and ingest. The anteal skip of body is then discarded and the hunt continues. The three main genera we keep as pets all originate in Africa. That said, they are easy to satisfy and it doesn't require any bells and whistles to create your own successful breeding colony. The most important requirement for these insects is that they need a reasonable amount of height in their enclosures and something they can hang from to molt, very similar to the needs of the praying mantis, as they also hang upside down and slide out of their exoskeleton during egg vices. Damp substrate should also be provided to encourage egg laying and raised cork bark gives them a good option to hide if it gets too bright, although they will be out quite frequently looking for food, mating or searching for somewhere to lay their eggs. Room temperature is adequate, but if you can provide slightly higher temperatures then do so if you want faster growth and more activity in your enclosure. They can tolerate a wide range of humidities, but I find 50-60% to 60 appears to be their favourite. 
This may deter many people from keeping these insects, but just like most animals, these bugs will only bite or spit as a last resort, and only ever in their defence. They are incredible creatures, that must be respected and cared for. If you start poking them with your finger, they are going to bite you, make no mistake about that. The bite is more painful than a bee or wasp sting, and antiseptic should be applied to the bite area as soon as you can stop swearing and jumping around with the intense local pain. This especially applies to anybody being theatrical for YouTube views. Aspirin or ibuprofen may also reduce the pain. On top of this, you may want to use protective eyewear when closely inspecting this insect as it is capable of spitting venom if it feels threatened. And that venom is always directed towards the eye, just like a spitting cobra. This can render some puny humans blind in the affected eye for several minutes to an hour. If this happens, you must rinse your eyeball out with clean water as soon as possible to ease the effect. I hope you found this video interesting and informative, and that you will come back and check out future videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.